What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers and welcome back to a special spooky Halloween episode of Curse Gun Images. Got my Halloween costume on as you can tell this year I'm going as an alcoholic. Ooh. Oh, don't laugh too hard this is the future for some of you. Except instead of a gun wall like this you get like a dingy apartment. <laughs> but in this edition of Curse Gun Images we're going to be looking at a specific variety. Notably the catalog of one Russian gun designer who had a taste for making cursed prototype weapons and probably meth. And to make this a well-rounded episode of Cursed Gun Images, after that, we've got some just miscellaneous, really just cursed shit. So let's get started. Now, this guy has been mentioned on Cursed Gun Images before, and I've explained this a little bit, but you know what? He's just done so much weird shit, I felt like it deserved its own episode. I mean, look at this shit. Just look at it. The fuck is that? That would be one of the prototypes designed by a Mr. German Korobov. His name is spelled like German, but I think it might be like Ermin, Herman. I don't know. Uh, would a Russian in the comments like to please angrily correct me? Thank you. Love you guys. I'm going to call him German Korobov because that's just easy. Uh, actually, I'm probably just going to call him Korobov because that's easier. Korobov had at least like a 30, 40 year career building prototype weapons for the Russian government, specifically ones that were never adopted. And you only have to take one look to figure out why. Plus my man had a taste for bullpups, which if you've been around the channel for a while, you know, I'm not even remotely close to a fan of most bullpups. If you have to ask why, you either own one and are coping, or you've never shot a gun. I do want an AUG though. I'm getting an AUG. Nope, 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 filming. But yeah, a lot of his prototypes were bullpups, like this one. This is the TKB-059. You know what's better than an AK? Apparently three AK-ish looking things melted together. At least that's what Korobov thought, because this is an actual design that he submitted for approval. It has three barrels and a 90 round box magazine to feed each of the three. The thought is, why have three round burst when you could just fire three goddamn fucking rifles at the same time? It was in 7.62 by 39. There was even a variant that apparently tried to use a few AKM parts to make it easy to produce. However, only two were ever made, which is one more than most of his prototypes. Wacky design looks like a stamped clamshell and uh, the handguard is ribbed for, <laughs> for his pleasure. Not cursed enough for you? Well, how about this one? The TKB 022 PM. So what would happen if you took a 7.62 by 39 Crank's mother and uh, made her down a fifth of vodka every night and then pushed her down a flight of stairs. Well, it would probably come out looking something like this. This came out sometime in the 60s and was meant to be a replacement for the AKM. As you can see, pretty much the entire frame of the gun seems to be made out of Bakelite, which was like an early polymer, really popular with the AK and, uh, and Russia in general, specifically like old, nice orange Bakelite mags and things. But this is the entire outside frame of the gun. You'll notice that's a recurring theme. Korobov loved his Bakelite, which not that I blame him, but he kind of goes a little overboard. Only weird part about Bakelite in this design is that from the side at the right angle, uh, it looks like a giant spray tan veiny cock. You can't unsee it now. This thing looks like a veiny Cheeto dick. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you don't think this looks like a veiny Cheeto dick, you're fucking blind and good luck finding the subscribe button. Now for this gun, you might be asking the age old question, where'd the bolt go though? Or at least you should. If you've been watching enough curse gun images, you should know this is a common problem. Usually only with shitty photoshops done by unoriginal teenagers who think they're funny. Korobov actually incorporated a solution to this problem into this design. The bolt don't go behind the magazine. All right, I'm done with that. Instead, there was a lever that pulled the cartridge from the magazine forward to where the bolt could then lock it into battery. Did this feature work? I don't know, they only made a couple, who knows. Clearly not well enough to be adopted, but Interesting solution to a problem that really shouldn't be a problem. There was also kind of a non-crank version of this made, just the regular TKB-022. Not a crank, somehow looks weirder. I know this is a prototype, but again, the entire <laughs> the length of the gun appears to be uh, all Bakelite, which means you want to change your pistol grip? Good luck, because there fucking isn't one. Want to change your stock? Fuck you. Want to change out the handguards or mount some sort of foregrip, laser, anything? Get fucked. This kind of looks visually like a Johnson rifle and an AKM with a Bakelite furniture and uh, magazine got morphed together like Jeff Goldblum's The Fly. 
Also, if you really wanna see some high res stuff with some of this, Kalashnikov Media actually has some videos where they went to the Tula Arms Library and uh, took a couple of these and, and just kind of took some glamour shots of them. So if you wanna see some high def stuff, they've got some great shit over there. But wait till the video's over, assholes. Now I do wanna be clear, I am not shitting on Korobov. His shit looks whack and it sounds like I'm shitting on him, but I'm really not. The guy had a lot of ideas that really were kind of ahead of their time in a lot of ways. Now the guns they were attached to, pretty fucking whack. Like this one, the TKB-011. It's another not quite AK bullpup, uh, except it has the stock of a old flintlock rifle, which also means the action has to kind of follow that trajectory. I don't know how this works on the inside. Gun looks fucking wacky, but it also incorporated a feature, which was an ejection chute, where uh, the instead of ejecting out to the side, where you know that might be a problem for uh, and for left-handed shooters, you know, being ambidextrous, has a chute that funnels the rounds out and ejecting forward which is a feature that was adopted decades later on things like the FN FS2000 and the Keltec RFB, for example. Do I like the feature? Not necessarily, especially on non bullpuffs, but you gotta give it to him. The guy was actually ahead of his time on that one. Also, what the fuck is up with the charging handle on some of these? It's another variant where you have to basically like curve it up and pull it back. Like what the fuck's going on here? A charging handle should not look like a children's maze. Now, when I say this guy had a long career, this guy had a long fucking career. Let's go back to one of his early, early prototypes. This is the TKB-408. Yes, oddly enough, another bullpup. But what makes this one interesting is it was designed in 1946, one year after World War II ended, and was actually a competitor to the AK-47 in the Russian assault rifle trials. So the guy lost to Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1946, 1947, and was trying to replace the AK ever since. So his career started in the 40s. Let's fast forward to the 80s. This is the TKB-0111. Now, if you think this looks like a steampunk version of the AN-94, that is exactly what I thought when I first saw it. Turns out, there's a reason. This was one of the guns submitted for Project Abakan. This was an experimental weapons program by Russia to find a replacement to the AK-74. One of the problems being that the AK-74 was apparently uh, not very accurate in uh, small bursts of fire. This was apparently such a big problem that they continue to use the AK-74 um, as their main infantry rifle for like 35 more fucking years. Unfortunately for him, this design was eliminated right off the bat. But still, this guy was nonstop creating new prototypes for the Russian military by their request from the 40s all the way through at least the early 80s. No, excuse me, the mid 80s. The guy lived a long life with fucking interesting prototypes. In fact, a really long life. Guy was born in 1913 before World War I and didn't die until 2006, meaning that Korobov could have played Modern Warfare on Xbox. Probably a good thing he didn't play any of the COD games that came out after he died, considering uh, he would have been, you know, constantly killed by the, uh, the guns that he lost to, like the AK and the AN-94. Awkward. But I'm sure you guys are done hearing the word Korobov by now, so let's get to those other cursed gun images that I've saved just for you guys. Not because I love you, but because you guys clearly don't love me. But you know who does love me? TacPak, also known as TacPak. They sent me a big old box of goodies to show you guys, including stuff like this uh, lockable custom foam padded case. AR mag, snap caps, you know the things that Alec Baldwin should have had. Glock 19 mag, Kershaw knife. A kit to make your AR jam less than it already does. Sons of Liberty Gunworks t-shirt, love those guys. But if you wanna sign up for Tac Pack, you can go ahead and use the code AKGUY and get a free US made AR part in your box if you're into that sort of thing. Deadline to sign up is the end of the month and they also have their new Christmas box available now. Appreciate Tac Pack, on to the cursed gun images. Hey mom, can we have VSS? No, we have VSS at home. VSS at home. This looks actually really good for what it is. This is not a VSS. This is a Vepard 12 gauge dressed up to look like a VSS. Not a promise I would have thought of, but uh, you know, it executed actually quite well. I really need to get a VSS on the channel. We might have something in the works. Only if you're good. Now after my type one video, everybody kept talking about, oh Brandon, put, uh, put plastic furniture on it. <laughs> That'd be so funny as if it's not like a priceless piece of fucking history, you hooligans. Well, no need, because somebody fucking did it. This is a Type 1 with garbage CAA furniture, Zenico grip, and a uh, AC Unity mag. It makes me sad to know that Mikhail Kalashnikov lived long enough to see 
CAA furniture. Thankfully, I know the guy who did this. He actually sent this to me. No permanent modifications were done to the gun to make this happen. This is just for whatever the opposite of internet clout is. He's over at Cold War Collectibles if you wanna check him out. Next up, one I've seen circulating the internet a little bit, but I, you know, why not? Let's talk about it. This is an AK-74 with a very troubling attachment under the, uh, under the barrel. That is what I hope to fuck is a prop RPG. Oh God, can you say backblast not clear? Stuff like this I know is done for the meme, done for a joke, but a lot of people don't understand RPGs and the consequences of what the fuck comes out the other side. We've covered this before in this episode of the Darwin Awards, but we might be doing an RPG little special segment in the next episode of the Darwin Awards. That's coming in the next week or two. Ah, arms list. 10 and a half inch, 300 blackout AR pistol. Hmm. What you doing with that stock there, buddy? Constructive intent. Little ATF guy peeking up over. Yeah, no, that's a fucking problem, dude. Why is this in cursed gun images and not gun meme review? Well, uh, because it is literally a cursed gun image uh, because whoever he pawns this off on is going to be cursed with a fucking visit from the ATF and one more dead dog than he started with. That's weird. That sounds like he had a collection of dead dogs. <laughs> okay, just moving on. Next up, we have a barbecue pit that uses a belt fed to keep you well fed. Thankfully, I don't actually think that it's an MG34. At least I fucking hope not. God, what is wrong with you people in Europe? Oi, I can't have this operable priceless collectible firearm, but I can demill it and use it to cook fish and chips. Whatever the fuck you eat over there. I don't know. Random attack on England successful. <laughs> Although I know full well. This is just a, this is, this is an American thing. Somebody in America did this. But speaking of the Brits, the looty or more accurately, the scoped Thompson Looty. If you're unfamiliar with the Looty, it was the original, basically the original FGC-9, where it was a, a home-built uh, British firearm, basically proving that you know gun control is bullshit and you can basically make a gun out of commonly available pipes if you have a welder. Did it work? Ish, I don't know. It was basically an open bolt submachine gun, pretty, pretty simple. It's basically just a spring in a tube, a firing pin with a barrel not a lot to fuck up there. Really neat piece of history. You know, I kind of always have wanted a looty just, just to have, I think it'd be neat. Tell you what, if this video gets 200,000 likes, we will build a full auto looty for the channel. So we've got a license for that. I pay the government my extortion money every year to be able to do cool shit like this. So yeah, 200,000 likes, we'll build a looty. And yes, I know, I know. St. Petersburg typewriter is, is in the works. We're, we're, we're working some stuff out, but I didn't forget about you. I don't know why I have to keep saying this, but when I promise you we're gonna build something, I keep my word. Some things take more time than others. You know what? Fuck you. Bull puffs your wrists. God didn't want you to fire 50 BMG out of a 12 gauge. He wouldn't have made it fit the chamber. Of course, I think I've talked about this on the channel. This really wouldn't do much. Um, it would just fire form the casing. The bullet would just kind of fly away. Probably wouldn't even be bad recoil on a super sawn off like that. See, the pressure is built by the barrel in the chamber, and it's why, you know, you get lower velocity the shorter the barrel gets, and when you have no fucking barrel, then you get... Yeah, who the fuck knows? A dangerous, expensive firecracker. Projectile dysfunction. But we are gonna test, I guess, my own take on the 50 BMG shotgun thing soon. Yeah, I saw this one going around. Dual failure button AR-15 upper. It ain't good. <laughs> also, nice use of General Sam. Sam, I know you're an avid watcher of the channel, obviously. Let's play some Tarkov. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck released this or if this is even real, but uh, <laughs> uh, having a forward assist on both sides of an AR-15, because, you know, for when, uh, for those hard stoppages, I guess you're just gonna tuck the stock in there and like dual wield the fucking forward assist, try to get the battery force something into your chamber twice as hard. I don't know. Maybe are you gonna like alternate and bump, 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 bump on both sides? I don't know what the fucking plan is here. Trying to make an ambi gun in the worst way possible. I don't know, guns fucked, industry's fucked, innovation's dead. Happy Halloween, don't poison children, video done. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect Just kidding. I actually love you guys. I do appreciate your support. And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thank you. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon.
And then we got a bunch of other cursed gun images that we want to take a look at. Or we don't want to look, take a look at. And to make this an all around, just well rounded episode, or all around, well rounded. That oh God, I got to burn. Yes, it is another bull pup. But what makes this interesting is that this was designed in 1946, one year after World War II ended, and actually was a competitor to the AK-47 in the Russian assault rifle. Ah, fuck me. God damn it. I literally had two, two words left. God, why are all the jokes I'm coming up with so fucked up?